He's not my boss, for which he's okay. thankful, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, he's my mentor in many ways. I mean, he's kind of my hero, Frank Drake. Right. Yes, Frank, uh, Frank is still, uh, he was the guy who did the first modern SETI experiment in 19, 1960 now. It's been 45 years. Yeah, I'm sure that's hard for him to believe. <laughs> uh, right. and, uh, wow. But he still comes into the office every day. He's very, very active. Yeah. Uh, and his equation, the Drake equation, indeed, that, that's Which something is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you see, he did this experiment where he took a couple of radio antennas. Mm -hmm. We call them radio telescopes, but they're basically radio antennas mm -hmm. with special kinds of receivers. And he aimed them uh, at a couple of nearby stars, mm -hmm. trying to see if he could pick up signals coming from planets around those stars. Right. He did that in 1960, April 1960. And uh, a year later, it generated so much interest. He only did it for a couple of weeks, but it yeah. generated so much interest that the next year right. he had a conference in West Virginia yeah. in which they decided, you know, let's talk about this kind of an experiment. And he needed an agenda for the conference and he wrote down this little equation. Uh -huh. That's what it was for. Now it's in you know, every textbook on this subject. <laughs> right. And it was just a little equation to try and estimate, well, how many societies are out there with their transmitters turned on right now right. that we could hear. Right. And, and the, the whole thing you talk about it, it, uh, to figure out there's something like ten, maybe ten thousand civilizations. We talk about this in terms of civilizations, and that there's something about the invention of radio, which is common to all civilizations, assuming that there are you know, other civilizations beyond us. Which I think is fascinating. Radio is that how you got interested in television? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well no, I'm not sure. It might have gone the other way around. I actually am, I am interested in radio. I have a you know amateur radio license and all that, but. You know, build stuff, soldering irons. Stuff. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, no. Well, when they but they talk about radio, and, and when they mean when they say radio, could very well be television. That's television is just a variation of radio. Right. The only difference is in the the message, if you will, the content right. of the signal has picture information in addition to in addition to the sound information. Yeah. But from a physics point of view, there's really not much difference between a a radio wave and a television wave. You know, they're different frequencies and look different on an oscilloscope. But you know, in terms of sending messages from one star system to another. You say radio, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in fact what you might pick up is a television broadcast or it might be a radar or it might be their GPS or who knows what it is, uh -huh, but uh -huh. you call all of that radio. It doesn't mean that you know, you're going to tune it in and listen to top 40. Right, well, but you, you might. Yeah, but you talk about it, it's it it starts with the invention of radio and the average lifespan of, of technology. Is that is that am I am I saying that right? Yeah, we well, are. If you mm. if you're talking about the Drake equation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, clearly the number of civilizations that are out there broadcasting right now depend on mm -hmm. how many stars are in our galaxy. What fraction of them have planets? Mm -hmm. What fraction of those planets ever cooked up life? Right. And what fraction of those planets that cooked up life ever cooked up intelligent life, able to build a radio transmitter? Mm -hmm. What fraction of them actually did that? And what fraction of them are on the air now, if you will? Right. So that's kind of the equation, really, right. in simplified terms. And it, you know, it's just a very straightforward yeah. description of the problem, if you will. I see. And you, at the time of this book, Sharing the Universe, you were, you were optimistic about mankind here on Earth surviving so that we can broadcast and maybe uh, discover other civilizations. How do you feel since September 11, 2001? Are you still optimistic? Oh, yeah, I'm still optimistic. <laughs> Look, you could have been optimistic in the 14th century when plague was wiping out a third of the population of Europe. Right. I mean, it's not so good locally. If you live in Europe, you know, right. probably you're going to die. <laughs> but, you know, but, but if you look, I mean, you have to look at the big picture and all these things. There's a right. tendency for people to focus on near-term problems. Mm -hmm. You know, people say to me, we're going we're gonna to pollute ourselves to death, or we're going to nuclear war, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And all of those things are real problems. I don't mean to belittle them, but, but right. you know, yeah, if you stand back and look at the broad sweep of things. Mm -hmm. You know, humans have been around for 300,000 years, so what happens in the next 10, 20, 30 years, you know, that's a small fraction of our, our existence on this planet. Mm -hmm. We might be able to do ourselves in. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to gainsay that. Maybe mm -hmm. we can, but mm -hmm. you know what I think is going to happen, Fred, is mm -hmm. in another 50 years we're going to be spreading out a little bit. There'll be a few people on the moon, maybe on Mars, right. maybe in rotating aluminum cans around the earth, you know, that's been proposed. Yeah. And it's not impossible to build these things. It's actually very straightforward to build them. Yeah. And you might say, well, I'm not so interested in living in a rotating aluminum can, but, you know, <laughs> there are no mosquitoes, no spiders. Yeah, yeah. Good. Or on an asteroid. You, you're asteroids <laughs> are another possibility. Yeah. In the end, all the real real estate is on asteroids. That's right. <laughs> asteroids have, have some problems. You have to sort of, you know, terraform them a little bit. You right. have to fix them up. Right. But you could, that's probably the future of mankind, because if we stay right. on this ball, Earth, mm -hmm. then we really will start running out of stuff, and then, you know, we, there'll be war and disease and so forth and so on. So, you know, spreading out is maybe not such a bad thing. Mm. The point is mm. that once you spread out, 
Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get rid of everybody. It's very hard to, you know, no matter what weapons you have, it's hard right. to get rid of everybody. Right, right. It's like ants. You can't <laughs> get rid of them all, you know? Right. And so I think that what it's going to happen is for the next 50 years, we've got to be careful that we don't do anything terrible. Right. And after that, it'll be very hard to get rid of us as a species. So mm -hmm. I think humans are probably around for a long time, as are, you know, I assume a lot of the aliens. They probably, you know, survive for long periods of time, too. Right. Now, you talk, there's, I've heard uh, type 1, type 2, type 3 civilizations. Are, are you, can you talk about that a little bit? What, well, uh, yeah, that was a categorization that was uh, devised by this Russian physicist. The guy's name was Nikolai Kardashev, in case you run into him in a bar. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure you can anymore. No, maybe you can. I think he's a rock. Anyhow, and he said, look, you know, there are going to be three kinds of uh, alien civilization. Let's just categorize them. The uh -huh. ones that you know, type 1 are the ones that he, he categorized them, by the way, on the on the amount of energy they use, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's sort of some index of civilization. Right. You can see it on Earth, right? The advanced societies use more energy per capita than the, the less advanced ones. Mm -hmm. So if you're type one civilization, mm. you're using the energy of your star and your planet, okay. right? Mm -hmm. No, sorry, you're just using the energy of your planet, like we do. Okay. Okay, so oil, gas, you know, that kind of stuff, fossil fuels. If you're type, so we're a type one civilization. Okay. Type two civilization uses all the energy of their star. Mm -hmm. Now the sun puts out, what is it? It's a uh, hundred million billion billion watts. We don't use a whole lot of that <laughs> stuff, right? right? That'd be great. Most of it just goes out into space, completely useless. Right. So we could, mm -hmm. and uh, then we would you know, have a better lifestyle for you. You'd have a more gusto grabbing lifestyle if we had more energy for you. See? Right. So that's a type two civilization. A type three civilization has managed to use all the energy produced by all the stars in their galaxy. Mm -hmm. Now that's, you know, that's a real wow. honking civilization. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be easy to find. <laughs> right. Now I was reading, it was in, in Mountain View here at, at Books Inc. the other day, and I was reading a book, on the bookshelf, something from a guy named Greenspoon. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Is it mm -hmm. Greenspoon? I yeah, Grin, Greenspoon. Greenspoon, yeah. okay. And, Greenspoon. He's, and he said he heard you speak at a conference saying that if SETI's going to find anything, it'll be within the next 20 years. And he made right. a point of that in his book. I don't know when when that was, but do you? How opt? I mean, do you think we're we're going to hear something from? from yeah, I, 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 I did mean, uh, present this idea. Now it's been more than a year ago. Okay. At, at a conference in Europe, but mm. you know, the, the the thing is that the SETI Institute is building, and the SETI Institute is here in Mountain View, but they have a, a joint effort with the University of California across the bay at Berkeley, mm -hmm. in which they're building building a new radio telescope. Oh. Okay. In Northern California, up in the Cascades, about I don't know, you know, f five or six hours from San Francisco, uh -huh. consisting of 350 sort of souped-up backyard satellite <laughs> antennas. Wow, right? they're, they're, they're really more than souped-up satellite antennas. Yeah. They, they're modified, but mm. it, it, that's what they sort of look like at first glance. Mm -hmm. Spread out over about a half a mile of of real estate up there. Mm -hmm. And this new telescope is called the Allen telescope array because Paul Allen, Paul Allen. co-founder of Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft. Right. Yeah, he, he gave a lot of the money to, to develop this. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. okay. So wow. when that thing gets going, uh, mm -hmm. it'll you know kind of dwarf all the experiments that have been done in the past. It's going to be a whole new, a new era for our search. Mm. And by the year 2025 or thereabouts, it will have checked out a few million star systems. I see. And it's um, not unreasonable to think that that's the number that will lead you to find something. I see. So I, I think we, if we're going to hear a signal, we're going to hear it in the next uh, two decades. So I'll bet you a cup of coffee on that. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that, that's, that's well, something that, to look forward to. That's interesting. And that's another question is, is it, do we really want to? I mean, we can hear the message, but do we want to return the phone call? Good you know, question. Right? As a, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, <laughs> for me, a lot of people is 10. But, you know, people have been thinking about that. And suppose you get a message. What should you do? Right. Should you just, okay, we got the message, you know, maybe we'll try and figure it out. But let's not make any noise about this because right. you don't know what these things are like. And it might be a little dangerous and the stakes are too high to gamble. Right. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I suspect that as soon as it's in, in the papers, everybody with a Ability to build a transmitter will be wielding their backyard antennas and <laughs> sending their personal philosophies to the aliens. I right. think that's human nature. <laughs> um, and, and so there, there's discussion about, uh, you know, should there be some sort of documents that say, well, don't do it unless, you know, the world agrees and that kind of thing. Right. But actually, I, I, I think it's not such a big issue because if you pick up a signal, mm -hmm. it's probably coming from hundreds, maybe thousands of light years away. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come here. That's point one. And even if you say send a reply, it may take hundreds of thousands of years to get there. Right. So I, I'm not sure that uh, it's such a worry. I, I think you have to look at it as one-way communication. Mm -hmm. You're going to pick up their signal. And you make